This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at advanced techniques in Apple Compressor. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to crop and pad video images. The next thing that we sometimes need to do is to crop a video. So what does cropping do? Well, in order for us to crop, I have to assign a compression setting. And because I want to illustrate cropping and not compression, I'm going to apply a ProRes 4 to 2 setting. Any setting works the same. Because I'm going to be creating a new piece of video, because it's going to be cropped, I'll have the source video and then a copy of it, which has got the crop settings. So I could apply any other setting, but ProRes is high quality and it's easy to use and most of all it's fast and I want to save all of us time. I'm going to create just video, so I'm going to change the format from video and audio to just video. Optimize for network use. When you check that, that means that the video will start playing before the download is finished. In general, you always want to check this. I can't think of a single occasion where not checking this makes sense for anything that's going to the web. And let's go to video. I'm going to hide the video properties. We're going to leave those alone and concentrate on cropping and padding. Cropping removes a portion of the frame. Padding puts black on sides of the frame. It adds to the frame. We're going to illustrate both. I want to crop this. Notice that right now it's 1920 by 1080. It is a 16 by 9 image. I want to crop it to be 4 by 3. When I do, notice that now my frame has been cropped so that I've lost that extra width. Now you notice it's missing on the right, but not missing on the left. That's because this slider is indicating the difference between before on the left and after on the right. And by grabbing the slider and dragging it left and right, I can see the what's going to be changed in my video. Now I'm not going to worry about the difference in color value because clearly we're losing some saturation and the gamma settings are changing. Uh, that is just an artifact of the display. If I want it to be instead of Panavision, okay, notice that now it's been cropped, but I'm missing the top of the church. Notice down here, when I set this to Panavision, it defaults to taking what's called a center cut. It's taking 131 pixels from the top and 131 pixels from the bottom. That totals out to 262. Well, I'm going to go back to Custom, go to Custom, I'm going to take 100 pixels off the top and 162 pixels off the bottom. It still totals the same number, but notice I'm no longer doing a center crop. I can now adjust the crop based upon the pixels. And notice I can also grab in the center here and drag up and down. It still keeps my pixel count the same, but I can determine what part of the image I want to crop. You cannot change the crop during the compression. In other words, you can't keyframe it so in scene one it takes the top and scene two it takes the bottom. If you need to do that, you're going to need to compress it in separate chunks and stitch the videos together. But can you take something other than the center? The answer is yes. To reset, there's no reset button here. So to reset, just double click each of these numbers and type zero in them and now we're back to our entire image. Let's just set this to be, oh, a three-second clip. Type the letter O. This is how we can set a short test section. We can also grab this right-pointing triangle and drag the in wherever we want. So I've got now a short piece and click Start Batch. It's going to process this fairly quickly. Let's open up the Compressed Files folder. There it is. And there's the New England Church. Let's make it smaller. And it's a 4 by 3 image but it's kind of big. In fact, a very useful function in both QuickTime 7 and QuickTime 10, and I'll be working with both of those today, is to type Command-I. This opens up the Movie Inspector. And if we look at the Movie Inspector, we see that it's set to 1440 by 1080. It's a 4 by 3 image, but it's definitely not standard def. Frame rate hasn't changed, and I'm currently displaying it at 720 by 540. Well, how come? I thought I had cropped it to be 4 by 3, and I did. I cropped the aspect ratio, but I didn't change the image size. So let's go to completed, 
shows it was a successfully completed job, and click this go back arrow. This resets the project. It reloads all the settings. It reloads the clip, gives it the same name, and warns me with this little yellow warning that the file name is the same, but that's okay. I want to get rid of the, the old file. I'm going to select this and go to video. And notice that it's still set to cropping, but this time I'm going to go up to video properties. And notice how the frame size is set to automatic. It's set to give me the largest frame possible. Well, this was a 1920 1080 image, so it's just going to take some stuff off the side. Well, I want to have it be standard def, so I'm going to set it to be 640 480. Now when I start the batch, it's going to do two, th well, first it's warning me that the file name is duplicated. I'll say continue, so I don't have to worry about that. It's now going to scale the file and crop it. So now I've got, let's just show our inspector, 640, 480, a perfect 4x3 image, and everything remains not squished. I just simply lost pixels off the side. Cropping always removes pixels. Padding adds them. So let's load a different clip. Let's highlight this, hit the delete key, command I to import a different clip, and let's bring in a four by three clip, which is Dr. Surf. And just because I don't wanna have us take a lot of time compressing this, we'll just set this to be the first few seconds of his clip. This is a four by three standard def clip. I need to move it up into HD. Now, clearly, taking an SD clip and enlarging it is going to make it blurry because there just aren't a lot of pixels to go around in SD images. I could scale this to whatever size I want, but just because I want to have him look reasonably good, I'm going to scale this up to a 1280 image. I don't need audio, so I'm going to say video only. Yes, I'm going to optimize for network use. Go to video. With padding, Here's how this works. I want to change the frame size. This is a range. It will be 100% size or smaller. I want to force it to go bigger. So I say I want it to be exactly 1280, 720. Well, it will stretch the video to fit, or I'm going to lose pixels off the top. I want to make sure that I preserve the entire aspect ratio. Standard def, whether it's PAL or NTSC, always works with non-square pixels. In NTSC video, they're either tall and thin or short and fat. With PAL video, they're short and really fat. None of them are square. So you must set this to a square pixel aspect ratio. Because this is NTSC and many NTSC and PAL videos are interlaced, I don't want to create an interlaced video. I need to make sure that the field order is set to progressive. Any interlaced video is going to look awful on the web. You must set it to progressive. So I'm going to set that to progressive. Now we're going to go down and add padding. With padding, preserve its source aspect ratio. When I do, now it's going to go into a 16 by 9 frame and add black on the sides, a process called pillar boxing, add black on the sides so that the image looks normal. So I'm going to create 1280-720 with a square pixel aspect ratio, which is important, and set it to progressive. One more thing, when you're changing interlaced to progressive, you want to change this. Linear is going to be the fastest, but you might want to play with a couple of these others and see which one appeals to you. By cubic will probably look the best, but it will take the longest amount of time. Let me just set it to by cubic. Retiming is only when you're changing frame rate. When you're resizing, by that I mean converting interlaced to progressive, you might want to play with a couple of these different settings. Whichever looks best to your eye is the best. There's no hidden technical, got to look at it at scopes kind of thing. Okay, so we've now used padding to add black left and right to create pillar boxes. We've set our image size, and let's click Start Batch. Again, because we're doing the bicubic for the scaling, it'll take another extra second or two, but it doesn't take long. We'll go back to here. 
There's Dr. Surf. Again, open up the inspector. 128720, didn't change the frame rate. We did add the padding and we did deinterlace him. Now, deinterlacing will always soften the picture because what deinterlacing is doing is it's taking half your horizontal lines away because it's the difference between the odd field and the even field that gives us that strange line. So deinterlacing always softens an image, but it will still look better on the web as a deinterlaced progressive image than something which is interlaced. Let's say I want to fit this to a 4x3 image. It's 16 by 9 So we will apply, again, any codec will work the same way. We'll go to ProRes. I want to have this be 640-480. Square pixels, that's good. It's already progressive. I don't have to worry about that. And we're going to preserve the aspect ratio. So now what we've just done is we've now preserved the aspect ratio. It's taking a 16 by 9 image puts it into a 4 by 3 frame. And now we have what's called letterboxing. So the black boxes are on the edges. They're called pillar boxing. I wonder at the top and the bottom. It's called letterboxing. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at the advanced features inside Apple Compressor. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 255. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it several times a month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.